we're already recording so this is a part where we'll be talking about leukemia or cancer in the blood okay so this one is um, we will be classifying leukemia and then we have um, two different cells that are involved sorry for that um, noise we have our myeloid and lymphoid so let's first define what is our myeloid okay so myeloid leukemia is uh, a type of cancer in the bone marrow so this one is more on the bone marrow while when we say lymphoid it deals with um the it also deals with the bone marrow itself but it's more on the lymphocytes okay which is a type of white blood cells okay this is the definition for this one okay so again when we say um, myeloid okay myeloid leukemia it's more of the bone marrow structures itself okay and uh, the soft inner parts of the bone okay according to the notes i have a notes notes here okay so next one it would be according to our onset it may be acute or abrupt in onset and then it may be a chronic that has been evolving through years we have four different types of leukemia for number one we, ca we, we have our aml or acute myeloid leukemia number two we have our lymphoid lip, uh, leukemia acute okay so we have the basic for the myeloid and lymphoid the acute phase one and two and then you have three and four the chronic acute and chronic the chronic stages a chronic myeloid leukemia and chronic lymphoid leukemia we'll be discussing that all without further ado let's go to the discussion here we have um, forms to detect uh, uh, okay so let's first define acute myeloid uh, leukemia this is a result from a defect in the hemopoietic system differentiating all myeloid cells which are found usually in the bone marrow it can further be classified into seven different subgroups the histogenic histology morphology and appearance of blast we won't be discussing that one but um, take note of the myeloid leukemia okay so for the prevalence what's the difference between your acute myeloid leukemia with the other group it affects all age group so bata matanda hindi niya pinipili but incidence rises when the age peaks so if ever it is common after 60 or 67 years of age parang peak niya na level na marami though it uh, specifically hits all the age group it rises when the age peaks at 67 years of age this is the most common non-lymphotic leukemia so this one is more on the myeloid therefore it's not lymphotic the book describes that San, uh, so Dart describes it like that and that occurs secondary to infection or hemorrhage so what the mortality okay for people with acute myeloid leukemia is not because of the cancer itself but due to the complications of infection because you have a depressed immune system and then your blood your bleeding factors are affected that's why these are the two costs causes of cancer usually the secondary that's the cause of your death okay so 
let's go to the next slide this one would be your clinical manifestations for aml we have um, sign sensitive symptoms evolved from insufficient production of normal blood cells so there is what is the key term insufficient production of normal blood cells so where does the blood cells normal blood cells usually form by usually it's in the bone marrow <coughs> so for acute um acute myeloid um leukemia and usually diba, uh there would be um immature myeloid lineage in the cell or the bone marrow therefore uh, we all know that uh, red blood cells are the ones delivering uh, oxygen and nutrients as well yung they in the bloodstream they also work hand in hand with the wb or our white blood cells what i mean therefore if there is a normal um production of normal blood cells which is your red and white blood cells there would be white cells are the guardians diba or the ones that are fighting bacteria so decrease in the count of wbc therefore makes the patient immunosuppressed or has a increased susceptibility on infection therefore there would be neutropenia that may cause fever and infection so you would be seeing the signs and symptoms increase in temperature and increase in infection we would also have anemia due to the in lack of your red blood cells and uh, distribution of uh, nutrition and oxygenation to the blood therefore resulting to weakness and fatigue and last but not the least for your signs and symptoms is your thrombocytopenia your bleeding or clotting factors or platelet count would be affected therefore less clotting factors or anti-bleeders in your body okay would lead you to bleeding parang di ba uh, it would platelets are parang yung clotting factors natin helps in the clotting uh, especially if there is a wound so low platelet count would mean risk for bleeding okay so where are the three most um common parts of bleeding it would be in your gi pulmonary and intracranial so we have your gi pulmo and brain if um not addressed properly and then we have a term here proliferation of leukemic cells within the organs so it does not just evolve the cells it produces more copies of it diba? usually um hindi siya hindi lang siya nag-evolve in through one cell it genetically um ask the bone marrow to produce more of the, those um abnormal cells so it proliferates inside your bone marrow okay so if it ever or the specific organ which is damaged in this particular case okay so in this part we have here pain from an enlarged liver or spleen because it proliferated in your liver or spleen since there's enlargement it would cause pain and tenderness within the part okay hyperplasia as well and bone pain due to bone marrow expansion depending on uh, the place or area okay so let's move on to the diagnostics for your AML we have here your CBC therefore diba, they determine nyo yung if there is decrease in platelet count was what I've said earlier if there is decrease in RBC okay your leukocyte count you would be checking that okay percentage of your normal cells is vastly decreased and bone marrow aspiration for specimen if there is excessive immature of blast cells we move on to the next for the medical management okay so for leukemia this one is to have a complete remission for a year or longer so the general um, objective or goal for cancer is survivability this one for AML is as well as survivability but it's more of the remission 
or hindi na mababawasan yung production ng abnormal cells na yun. So, how do we manage that? Okay, so we have our chemotherapy, number one. We have also our induction therapy. Here are the medications. Okay, so you just read on this one in your pharmacology. Okay, and then we have your consolidation therapy. So, usually this is post-remission for the therapy with chemo chemotherapeutic agents. Okay, so next one would be supportive care. So when you say supportive care with leukemia, it not just talks about financial support, emotional support from the relatives. It's more of your blood product support. Okay, so here we have administration of blood products, especially if your RBC or your red blood cells and platelets are low. We support them by transfusion okay, of blood products. And then we have prompt treatment of infection. We know they're immunosuppressed, but we don't want the patient to undergo um, infection. That's why we treat it promptly. And then we monitor and uh, try to um, observe the granulocyte colony simulating factor by uh, laboratories to decrease neutropenia or the risk for the patient to have infection. We have your hydroxyurea or hydrea to control the increase of blood blast cells. So we now want to rem do remission or decrease in the number of blast cells. And another surgical management would be your bone marrow transport plantation. So you know that the bone marrow is generating abnormal copies already. Therefore, the genetics of that uh, bone marrow is already unmatched on the system therefore we need to replace it with a compatible bone marrow That's, this one is only used when tissues are unmatched and obtained and done with the following uh, done following the destruction of leukemic marrow by chemotherapy so this is done after uh, chemotherapy kasi sayang naman if uh, there would be still cancer cells and you would do bone marrow transplantation it might uh, the bone marrow or the cancer cells might go again to the bone marrow therefore repeating the process Kaya usually uh, it would be done after your chemotherapy the bone marrow transplantation after completing the cycles of chemotherapy okay the next one is your we're done with the myeloid the AML now we go to the lymphoid the ALL okay so this one would be the result from an uncontrolled proliferation of immature cells which is our lymphoblast from the lymphoid stem cells so initially yung sa A AML usually anong ano anong cells ang involved di ba blast cells lang this one for your lymphoid it's more specific for your lymphoblast okay so when we say um lymphoblast this one is your uh, chromosomal aberration resulting in an abnormal transcription of the factors that may be um, developed by B and T cells. So usually this one is for B and T cells. So immature, let me just note it down, B and T cells. Okay. So for the prevalence, usually ALL is for children. Okay, so a, a primary difference between the AML and the ALL. The AML peaks at the age of what? 67. This one is common to young children. Okay, so the peak for this one is 4 years of age. Kasi kung AML would be peaking at 67, this one would be peaking at 4 years of age. And this one affects boys more frequently rather than the girls according to studies. Okay, so after 15, there would be decrease in prevalence of this specific type of cancer. Okay, because usually this one would be for children. Okay, so if ever there would be early therapy for children with cancer, it says that it has 80% of survival rate of at least 5 years. So the survival rate is a little bit high, or actually a little bit high, but it's really high if detected early and treated. Okay, so clinical manifestations for a, um, uh, ALL. Okay, so as it's, it's just the same. 
for uh, AML, but this one affects the child. The child again, it's enlarged liver. If ever it, uh, it the cells produce or go to that area and pull up, enlarged liver and um, spleen. There's bone pain, and the difference would be headache, nausea, vomiting due to meningeal involvement. So this hand has meningeal um, involvement factors as well. So usually signs and symptoms usually in the laboratory you would see decreased leukocytes and erythrocytes and platelets due to inhibited normal hematopoiesis okay okay so uh, like um, the AML we have to prevent uh, bleeding on your GI and your brain and your lungs usually that's why we um, do intracranial in irradiation or intric uh, intra intrathecal chemotherapy okay so usually you would be using this drug methotrexate or combined therapy would be done so here uh, it's also encouraged to have induction therapy where it involves corticosteroids further immunosuppressants but it targets more on the cancer cells the vinca alkaloids this one is um, converting the acidic nature of the body to alkalinic we have your anthracy anthracycline as another form of induction therapy and your you have your asparginase or elspar okay so usually this it intensifications and consolidation therapy usually once in remission to prevent relapse this one is after treatment it would be used so that um, this uh, abnormal cells won't grow again and then in adults if ever when the patient grows old after the peak for AML allogenic transplant would be do done okay so sir May tanong kami, ano yung allogenic transplant na yan? So, allogenic transplant is a stem cell that is um, used from a healthy blood stream from a donor to replace the deceased or the damaged bone marrow. So, this one is usually stem cell replacement that targets more on the bone marrow okay so for prolonged maintenance phase treatment uh, usually um, goes up to three years when transplant is not an option okay let's move this one to the next we're done already with acute we'll go with the chronic so when we say chronic myeloid leukemia as well myeloid stem cells as well but this one is more than a specific number of months okay so chronic na siya pang matagalan na siya okay so for the risk factors we have the cytogenic abnormality okay with philadelphia chromosomes in 90 to 99 90 to 95 percent okay so let's have a review for um for aml or acute myel uh myeloid uh, leukemia usually the blast cells are affected for the ALL the lymphoblastocytes are affected for here um, it's usually cytogenic abnormality since it's prolonged the pre philadelphia chromosome so remember that one uh, this one is more of the philadelphia chromosome so when we say CML okay so this one is increasing in age uncommon before 20 pero yung mean age or the group remember for myeloid is more of the adult age okay let's move okay so we have three stages of cml we have the chronic the transformation and accelerated of blast crisis okay so the thing here here is um we avoid again infection or bleeding oops my camera tilted already Next one, uh, we have here uh, 
Okay, let's first define the three stages of um, CML. Okay. According to my notes. Let's just simplify my notes. Okay. Okay, so when we say chronic phase, this one is um, they would have less than 10% of blast cells. Blast cells in bone marrow. When we say the transformation phase, This one is yung evolution of cells. And then when we say the blast phase or the accelerated phase, this one is more than 20%. Okay, that's the simple explanation for this one. Okay. Usually, 20%. Some books would say 15 to 20 or some reference would say but um, for discussion we'd be using the more than 20%. Okay, so again infection and bleeding are the cost of uh, complications during the acute phase. Okay, so uh, we have here for CML we have a symptomatic leukocytosis Okay, detected by CBC count, splenomegaly, enlargement of the spleen with tenderness, hepatomegaly, there's enlargement of the spleen. So initially, the ba sa AML, usually pain lang sa spleen and uh, liver, but here you have increase in size of your spleen and uh, liver. Okay, so since your spleen and liver is enlarged and uh, there is leukostasis, okay, um nagpo-push yung organs mo para lesser yung expansion ng lungs so it may cause um shortness of breath but the initial cause of it would be due to leukostasis okay tapos hindi pa maganda yung distribution nyo that's why there would be shortness of breath and decrease in oxygenation therefore decrease in, in oxygenation leads to confusion as well Kasi uh, there is decreased oxygen supply or nutrient supply going towards the brain. So, here in the transformation phase, here are the usual signs and symptoms. You have your bone pain, fever, weight loss, anemia, and thrombocytopenia or bleeding tendencies. Okay, we move on to the next. For the diagnosis, again, we have CBCs. Here are the indications. And we have your bone marrow specimen or aspiration to determine whatever type of spectrum cells are seen there or immunomature. We move on to the next. For the pharmacological management, for the chronic, we have here your Glivec, okay, tyrosine kinine, uh, kinase inhibitor that elicits a molecular remission, okay, or uh, um, production. We have uh, another option of bone marrow transplant or cell transplantation, but make sure uh, that uh, this one would be following a series of other managements as additional treatment strategies. So this is more of a combination. Okay, so we have also our induction therapy. We have already discussed this. Leukaparesis, okay for more than 300 and oral chemotherapeutic drugs which are indicated here okay let's move on okay so first we go on to the CLL oops sorry I've skipped here is the introduction for CLL let's define it it's derived from a malignant clone of B lymphocytes again a review for um, blast AML would be your blast site 
blast cells your leuco blast for your AL, um, ALL when we talk about CML it's your Philadelphia diba Philadelphia chromosomes and for your CLL it would be your B lymphocytes okay so those are parang yung major cells that are affected or um, players when we talk about ALL okay so this is the common cancer for older adults syempre kaya nga chronic matanda na rin and it has past years usually diagnosed during phys physical examination for other disease accident din lang siya nakikita or na diagnose okay so this one uh, okay so uh, for age group this one it's the cell or origin and then for the age diba sinabi natin yung blast site is 67 years old yung mean or yung peak for leukoblast it peaks at 4 years old for CML then yun nga din uh, 7 uh, it peaks around 60 60s okay and then this one would be more on 70s ah okay 70 years old sir bakit hindi na bating affected kasi ALL na yung most common sa mga bata or sometimes people who are not diagnosed acutely leads to your chronic kasi late stage na sila na diagnose okay so clinical manifestations usually asymptomatic yan that's why it's not detected early lymphocytosis is always present okay lymphadenopathy or enlargement of the lymph nodes is seen and severe and painful malalaking kulani at masakit pag hinahawakan splenomegaly malaki ang ating spleen a uh, energy or decrease of uh, absent reaction to skin sensitivity test that detects in cell immunity okay so infections are common usually the B symptoms you have your fever night sweats and intentional weight loss okay again what are the B symptoms we have your fever night sweats and an intentional weight loss <coughs> okay so we have here anemia and thrombocytopenia later on in the late stage Okay, so for the treatment, we have your chemotherapy. Here are the drugs that are used to fight the genetics of the cancer. We have alternative monoclonal antibody or al alemtuzumab. Alem tuzu okay. okay, so this one would be um, in combination as well. We also have prophylactic use of antiviral agents, okay, for uh, the use of alemtuzumab, significant risk for infection, because this one decreases your immunity, and therefore, if there are uh, opportunistic organisms that comes into the body, we use pro prophylactic antiviral um, medications or antibiotics. Here we also have the IVIG or immunoglobulin to prevent recurrent bar, uh, bacterial infection. Okay, so this is the combination of um, chemotherapy. Uh, Monosyonal antibody, antiviral, and antibiotics antibacterial pala I mean okay so here are your medical managements we move to the next okay it says here that um, there is a range of signs and symptoms depending we would be treating the symptoms okay so check the history the age group um, predisposing factors as is for the blood results okay as said earlier the CBC, PBS, bone marrow, biopsy, creatinine and electrolyte level test and functions 
Okay, so for the nursing diagnosis for all, usually it encompasses it. We will always focus on what? The complications, infection and bleeding. Don't want this one. So usually, it's for infection and bleeding, impaired skin integrity because of the toxic uh, chemotherapeutic drugs. And it may be because of the malnutrition because there is um, significant decrease in appetite. Nutritional imbalance, okay. Acute pain, discomfort related to mucositis, leukocytic uh, infiltration of system tissues, fear, fever, and infection. So fatigue, usually this is activity intolerance, and the conditioning. Okay. Risk for fluid deficit, it's also um, seen here. It may be due to diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding, or infection, or metabolic rate. Okay, self-care deficit is also due to fatigue, malaise, and protective isolation. Usually, these are the patients who are given reverse isolation. So, sir, what's the difference between a regular isolation and reverse isolation? Okay, when we say isolation, the patient is sick and infectious therefore we remove him or her from the general public to avoid the spread of infection that one the sick person is infected here naman the sick person is immunosuppressed and uh, is prone to infection so we remove him from the general public this is more of the protective to the person and isolation is protective for the relatives or the greater people okay so that's the difference between a regular isolation and reverse isolation okay so grieving or anticipatory loss we all know the coping and the end of cancer it's not always good also have disturbed body image due to change in appearance function and roles also have spiritual distress this is where you would be seeing why me god okay so this one would be a good time to practice your therapeutic communication and also knowledge deficit of the disease you need to educate and help them cope with the happenings or the treatment Okay, so I've discussed this in passing. So infection, bleeding, renal dysfunction, especially if um, the abnormal blood cells pull in your kidneys. Abnormal cells in kidneys. Therefore, it hinders the function of filtration in the kidneys. Since this one involves the blood, chunks of blood pull in the kidneys therefore altering the function of filtration of uh, blood and waste products therefore uh, there would be waste products retained in the system uh, causing different chaotic um, signs and symptoms as well the tumor lysis syndrome okay the nutritional depletion because um, distribution of nutrients is altered and the cancer cells are competing for the nutrients as well that's why nutritional um, distribution is altered and depleted mucositis and depression and anxiety okay moving on for the planning and goal we don't want the complications because we want to increase the survival rate of the patient pain management as well Okay, for number two, attainment and maintenance of adequate nutrition to promote activity tolerance, the ability to provide self-care and do to cope with the diagnosis or prognosis, prognosis and involve the patient. Don't make the patient parang uninvolved and you're doing restrictions for the patient. So involve the patient in planning for his or her well-being. So maintain or provide a, posi a positive body image and then understand the disease process, its treatment, how to prevent it, and how to um, make sure that the remission of the disease is present. Okay, so 
for the preventive and management of bleeding note for laboratories okay i'll just be passing on this and summarizing this note for skin um, disorders especially for bleeding tendencies petechiae melena hematuria and epistaxis okay so petechiae is yung redness the dots redness dots or parang um, patches of uh, pinpoints of blood in the skin melena is um, black tarry stool hematuria is blood in urine epistaxis is nose bleeding okay so bleeding precautions na lang then avoid trauma and injection kasi trauma would cause bleeding injections or punctures could cause bleeding also as a, in the site so use small gauge needles if necessary injections would be applied so we have here also apply pressure after injection to avoid and promote coagulation uh, okay so use ascent uh, acetap Minopen instead of aspirin for analgesia. So pharmacologic factor for aspirin. This one is a um, this one uh, vasodilate. Ah, sorry, sorry. Let me think about the term. This one makes your blood viscous. It's a blood thinner. There you go. I got the word. It's a blood thinner. That's why we don't want the blood to be thin because it's high risk for bleeding. That's why we use other. Uh, medications instead okay so give prescribed hormone therapy to prevent menses because menses is a form of bleeding and we don't want ex excessive menses for ladies okay so prevent and manage with bed rest so you should rest to avoid fatigue and we uh, to avoid fatigue and uh, exertion of energy and oxygen demand increase we encourage bed rest so we transfuse the proper blood products which are the rbc's and platelets okay so for the uh, prevention of infection usually we go to the non-collaborative and basic care that we can do assess vital signs temp flash appearance chills tachycardia white patches on mouth so make sure to disinfect your apparatus when checking your vital signs because usually this would be the introduction for infection and you want to prevent prevention you want to prevent infection therefore you must religiously um, clean your apparatus while using it to patient okay so assess cough and changes in character or color of sputum give frequent oral hygiene with soft bristles because we don't want to initiate bleeding wear sterile gloves to start infusion because we don't want um we use sterile gloves so that we could um use the aseptic or surgical technique for the patients provide daily iv site care and observe for sites of infection ensure normal elimination okay so avoid invasive vaginal or rectal procedures as possible that it may cause bleeding avoid catheterization unless essential and let's observe aseptic technique for the management of mucositis okay so assess oral mucosa thoroughly as well hygiene soft bristle toothbrush as what we have done initially in the introduction or overview avoid drying agents for like um, commercial mouthwashes and chemicals okay emphasize in the needs of oral rinse instead of toothbrush na tolerable in case there is bleeding cleanse with peri uh, perirectal area after each bowel movement to avoid infection as well and the well, last but not the least is monitor frequently of stool stop stool softeners with loose stool already so you don't want to associate a um, loose bowel movement with stool softener because it would deplete aside from depleting your electrolytes it would irritate the skin if you do frequent washing skin irritation would be decreased because if you would be washing um the perineal area met maya and then the what they call this the stool is loose and it would be um, messy around the diaper especially if you have older clients it would be infecting the skin or the perineal areas if the stool is always passed so we don't want that skin breakage and irritation we go on to the next one is for the improvement of um, nutritional intake so let me just browse it so oral hygiene to promote chew 
um, palatable small frequent feedings according to the um, taste of the patient as long as it's coordinated with the nutritional support record body weight perform calorie count okay so so we would do um, nutritional assessment if it's effective or not and parenteral nutrition if required yung IV meds natin or IV nutritions okay so for pain management analgesics okay so sponge with cool water for fever and avoid cold water as um, extremes of temperature avoid um, applying it to the patient because it may cause her harm or they may not be sensitive enough to feel um, the temperature as is in oral hygiene use of patient controlled analgesic pump so I've discussed about this in the previous videos critical strategies for uninterrupted um, sleep so this one is promoting rest and comfort because the, once the patient is on analgesia or uh, on sedation if ever um, there would be opioids uh, creative or non-disturbed sleep patterns would be at least available para at least hindi naman sila laging nakaka-feel ng pain and then listen actively to patients who are enduring pain yes it might sound overreacting for you but for the patient it's real and it's really scaled like that kahit it's a little bit tolerable for you the sensation or the interpretation of that patient would be different very much different Okay, so for the decrease in fatigue, as is in choosing the activities and priorities for energy conservation, help and balance rest, as well as um, conservation of energy, stationary bicycle and sitting up on chair would be some exercises to increase the endurance or cardio, use high efficiency, high efficiency particulate air or HEPA filter mask to ambulate outside room because we don't want them to diba? it's isolation reverse but nowadays during pandemic uh, masks are used always but for this one HEPA filter mask would be encouraged to be used for additional protection for these patients who are trying to ambulate outside so arrange physical therapy when indicated to strengthen for strengthening and to lessen the fatigue Okay, so this one is more of the fluid balance, I and O, um, overload, watch out, monitor your laboratory test, your bleeding, and your bleeding functions and your B and creatinine. This one is your renal function test to rule out any um, problem in the renal area. And improve self-care, usually do as much as possible as tolerated, listen uh, empathetically, putting yourself in your patient's shoe and assist to review more self-care during recovery and treatment for management of grief and anxiety this one is more of coping emotional support necessary information that is needed so documentation uh, identify the source of grief and allow the time to adjust so remember time is uh, always there but you need to um, let the patient adjust to the life changes as well and uh, make him or her comfortable and give her time to think and prioritize okay so communicate with the healthcare workers across various settings this one is for planning and at least um, giving them the opportunity to uh, do the fa patient a favor by reverse isolating with them or cheering them up through other means of communication so assess spiritual and religious practices and assist to maintain realistic hope over the course of uh, illness and initially for a cure for example in, yeah, uh, let's target that, uh, there would be remissions on the growth of the cells and then later on if ever uh, it progresses because we all know that eventually in the late stage um, there would be a quiet and dignified death so I've explained it already in the part 6 or part 7 on how they would be uh, manage, managing the family along with the patient in decision making with the later stage with a dignified death and dying okay for client education we have the understanding of disease complications unnecessary care for vascular access device if needed communication among healthcare workers to alleviate the feeling of abandonment so 
take note, communication is important. Hindi porkit naka-reverse isolation sila, hindi nyo na sila kinakausap. Take time to communicate, take time to patch up relationships, and take time to connect them with the people in the outside world by the use of technology. And then we have here specific instructions on what um, and when to report to the physician. This is more of a referral system and uh, reporting. For terminal care, for end of life, okay, so respect the choices. For example, the patient does not want to and the relatives does not want to, even if you're full on go, respect their decisions, okay? So this one, you would be using the advanced directives, uh, living wheels and DNR. This would be provided later on in your classes. We would be discussing that one. And then we have here provide measure of control during terminal in illnesses. Okay, so for example, for the control, this one would be um, control over your pain or the patient control analgesia. And then measures of control, uh, not all relatives would be seeing the patient to avoid uh, what they call this um, infection. So usually those are the things that would be controlling pain, um, infection, and bleeding. So that would be the things that we would be controlling. Okay, so if ever, support family and coordinate with the home care services. If they would want the patient to be brought home in that specific state, you would be respecting that. Uh, so they would be signing home against medical advice. But make sure to uh, give um, numbers if ever there would be um, home services available or if there would be any problem for reporting. So hospice volunteer, at least if the patient is all by him or herself uh, undergoing leukemia that they opted to stay at home, you would be hiring nurses okay, to watch over the patient. At least care would be still continued. Assist to cope with the changes in roles and responsibilities. This one would be more of to the family. Once the relative with leukemia dies, there would be change in role. So the son would be the father, standing for the father or the mother, or the father would be both the mother and father for the children. Okay, so there would be changes in roles and um, at least you would be uh, giving them um, assist in changing uh, or assist them in changing the roles. For example, when meeting with the family, or you'll be responsible say your daddy won't be around usually th those are encouraging words your daddy won't be around uh, anymore so you would be taking care of your mom and do the best you can so that um, you and your sister or your family would go on so this one is a little bit hard especially if you're a new nurse it takes um, talent to communicate and assist especially with these changes of roles and responsibilities and later on do the palliative care in hospital based hospice program okay so for the exa outcomes and yeah it's just the same avoid um, infection and bleeding um, intact mucous membrane and skin optimal nutrition satisfaction and without pain without fatigue normal and balanced fluid and output and electrolytes um, the patient is able to participate in self-care, coping, and management, and grief, and absence of complication. Okay, so maybe that, okay, actually it's not maybe, that ends our slide and our discussion for today. Um, if ever you have questions, you know how to reach me. Just give me a personal message in our Microsoft Teams. Okay, so I hope you've learned something. This is a little bit hard to understand, especially when it comes to the late or terminal phase of care. And as nurses, um, we would be still maturing later on. So um, thank you guys for listening and ending this video. Uh, I would be um, very glad that you would be always safe and I would be praying for you always as you go on with your duties and responsibilities as students or listeners as well and future um, nurses to care with patients having cellular aberration with that goodbye and i will be seeing you soon